Hey, welcome, good morning, everyone, to our viewers here on Twitch and Lee Chess. It's a um, beautiful Friday morning here in Budapest, Hungary. Overcast and gray as always. Good morning, Soltigo, troll, Arsenal fan. Arsenal fan, I hope you enjoyed Fight Club last night. Slash chess, slash fight, slash chess, slash drinking club. I wish all of my chess club experiences were as exciting as yours. Um, <clears throat> but um, yeah, I would like to get back to Hastings to play uh, to play that tournament once once again sometime. Um, we've got five plus three through seven plus three challenges today. Just regular casual challenges. Guys, I'm uh, doing a simul on Sunday. <laughs> it's it's the usual lately 30 plus 30 about two and a half hour time control between two and a half hours and three hours at 6 30 p.m on sunday evening if you're free um 6 30 p.m sunday cet we um we'd like to welcome back soltigo he was here yesterday as well but anyway good to have you back from your from your hospitalization all right, guys. Um, Troll is challenging me. We've got uh, Arsenal fan, I think. Mule Skinner, and maybe Mule Skinner has Fridays off. He's not often here with us in the morning. Um, Soltigo. All right. So let's just get started with the challenge from Troll. It's a regular chess today. You can challenge me to chess nine sixty if you want to. But uh, that's what's that's what we're doing here with with Troll on a roll. I think Troll has another account because he his rating never changes on this account. I think I knew that already. All right. Bishop's in the center of the board. We could do like a hippopotamus with d3 and e3. No, but seriously, um, the knight on a1 is, is quite awkward. I'm just going to bring this out. You cancel your challenge so you could be fourth. Got to watch that a2 pawn in the event of the queen. Maybe I'll just castle queenside, depending on the situation. The center of the board. Alright. We've been running well against Troll. He played e5. Establishing a classical center. Alright, let's just do it. e4, e5. Yeah, I don't think that Troll plays anyone else. <laughs> he's, he's lost every single game in a row. Um, but only because of time. He often has a good position. He's addicted to losing on time. Kind of like me in my recent last tournament. I didn't actually lose on time, but I lost because of time quite frequently. All right, I've got a team game on Sunday relatively low rated opponent I think so gotta win um, yeah that's the he's quoting my Emery Emery Tate chess chess uh, icon American chess icon passed away I don't know how long it's been now <clears throat> a year and a half ago um, I often quote his blitz his blitz exclamation. Um, e four ninety six. Fide master, no international master Emery Tate. He was a Fide master forever, but then he got the I M title relatively late in his career. Um, entertaining person. The chess world lost a lot of a lot of people in the last couple of years. Walter Brown, Dvoretsky. All right, e4, knight e6, of course, Korchnoi. We're just developing knights. What do you think was the biggest breakthrough in strength you had and why? Um, asked Arsenal fan. Arsenal fan, I was a very gradual improver. Um, I think if you look at my, if you look at my development rating wise and stuff like that, 
it was really like a, a very smooth progression slowly and and surely so that's kind of a difficult question to ask um i mean to answer i don't really have an answer for you um i wasn't you know a player who just suddenly got better i played a lot and i gradually got stronger and stronger until i started getting worse <laughs> recently um but uh seriously i'm not sure i actually got worse but I stopped playing for, not completely, but I stopped playing heavily about five or six years ago, and that seemed to hurt my game pretty seriously. Um, before that, I played lots and lots of GM tournaments here in, in Budapest, and I think my rating was a little bit below what it could have been. I might have been a bit, I think I'm still underrated, but I didn't show it in the last the last event. But it's important for me to play frequently. Was my queen getting trapped on on a7? Troll may yet be be asleep here. Last time <clears throat> against troll, I did the same thing. I, I led with this knight out to h5. Um, I got tempted into a into a knight leap like very early not developing the rest of my pieces um, in yesterday's game. I thought it was a really good subscriber stream yesterday. Um, I felt like I was impassioned and uh, and, I, and I had a, like a lot of nice comments um, I made. If I do say so myself yesterday, I was really kind of into it. But I, um, <clears throat> I can't really say I had a jump in, in strength at any particular point. Um, you know, it's difficult. I mean, maybe I kind of quickly jumped from like, relatively quickly jumped from like around 1800 to 2000. You know, I probably went through that, that period pretty quickly. Um, but, uh. After that, it was just steady, steady up until 2,500 USCF, and then I got stuck. You know, 24, 2463 was my highest FIDE rating, and and my highest USCF was like 2513. Um, there's some inflation with US ratings, so that's normal. But I just couldn't get beyond it, and uh, I don't know. A7 is hanging. He's going to sacrifice this pawn. I think I almost have to take it. Then he's got very serious counterplay. With um, bishop e6, queen a4, knight f4. It's reminding me of yesterday's game, pretty much. Exactly. Probably a mistake leading with this knight out. <sighs> Queen f8 is a really, really strong move. <clears throat> I just completely overlooked it. Okay, maybe I can try something like Queen takes pawn and, and Queen a3. <clears throat> But I think the black has really good compensation already. This is just grabbing. Grabbing material, losing coordination, and, and I could become behind in development. Nice move, queen f8, man. Don't allow me to, to check on d6, and, and maybe it was like forced, actually. So there's no excuse not to see that, but... Wasn't really... I mean, he could have played b6, uh, bishop b6 instead. No, he couldn't because of 97 check. Okay, so this is basically forced. He's got the hole at, at e7. I really should have anticipated queen f8. And now I lose the initiative. Lose the initiative.
at least if I trade queens, um, I mean, I don't think the b-file is really a serious consideration here, but I thought I can trade queens, which might lessen his initiative a little bit. There's this check. I can grab the bishop pair. And maybe objectively it's not that bad for me as I feared. I was concerned about knight f4 here. But I have several options. Um, I could even put the knight back on, on like e3 and defend g2. Maybe, <clears throat> maybe he doesn't have enough compensation. But I'm only up a double pawn, so he doesn't need to do anything, really. I think this might be, it might be a mistake to play knight f4. Maybe he's just get on, get on with his development. Um, but on the other hand, I could play something like a4, a5, kind of make my extra double pawn count. What did he do? He castled here. That's kind of weird. Um, a4, a5. I don't know if this is a good move, seriously. Probably I should have checked him and taken his bishop on e8. I don't know why I'm so obsessed with playing a4, a5. Okay, down the line, my a pawn would become my a pawns would become weak along the a file. So if I can play a five, I can also fix his pawn on b seven. But in the meantime, he has some central play with d five. It doesn't threaten anything right away, but ultimately, I think he definitely should play d five. What's up, everyone? It's Friday. It doesn't look like there's too many players on Lee Chess. When I looked in the community, um, not a lot of high-rated players, but a lot of my friends are online here. I guess all my friends are like low-rated players. I am Spinal Tap is on. He was like third on the list, which which is like, there's not a lot of GMs on right now. Um, <clears throat> Yeroon's on. I don't know if he's watching our stream or not. And... Uh, I think a lot of people take Friday off from their work because it's always like my friends list is like really heavily populated on Friday mornings. Most mornings it's like nobody's here except for the regulars, but uh, I've got like a lot of online friends. All right. <clears throat> anyway, Black's position seems fundamentally kind of healthy. My knight on f5 gonna have to pull it back. Um, if g6 it's gonna have to retreat. There's nothing wrong with black's position except for that double pawn, and I don't think that's that relevant. I mean, this this pawn on a2 is my only my only advantage, so to speak, and it's not relevant here. So I guess black is black is possibly just better, despite the fact that he's down a pawn technically. I think his position is healthier, and I don't know what to do. What if I were to play maybe rook, rook f1, followed by trying to trade the dark skirt bishop? He's been sitting on this idea of knight f4 and not doing anything, maybe because his g7 pawn hangs, but... I don't like my structure. <clears throat> Not a very, uh, am I number one? 
you are number one. Is it alphabetical or something? I never really thought about it. It is alphabetical. Okay, that's really, that's really uh, deep. So now the knight has to go to g3 or h4. I can play g3, knight h4, knight g2. Yeah, I mean, this this is going to be a problem. But he's closed up the structure, which... I really don't mind this. Um, this would actually... Leave my knight relatively passive, I guess. But also, I can help... You know, it can help me to push through f4, maybe. I'm thinking optimistically here. This game will be decided by a time, unfortunately, for Mr. Troll. I could play knight h6, technically. It looks like something Ivan Chuk would do. You know, he like he did it in, in Gibraltar again. He like put a knight on a7 in one of these positions where there's like pawns on b7 and a6. Only Ivanchuk would put his knight on, on the square on, like, a7 where it can't get out. You know, it's just, like, almost incomprehensible. Um, I don't remember, like, who he was playing, but... Extremely creative player. Someone the other day was, um, was defending Rapport's craziness, although he played really chill in this Gibraltar tournament. I'm always talking about how Rapport is too much of a maniac, and, uh... Discussing this with some Hungarian chess players, someone brought up like, oh, well, Ivanchuk, you know, everyone has this love for Ivanchuk, how, how, uh, you know, and he's like Rapport, you know, so the guy made this, made this comparison between Ivanchuk and Rapport, and I thought it wasn't really right, you know, because Ivanchuk is, and always has been, he's extremely creative, you know, but he's not a maniac, you know what I mean? He, he's kind of sound. He's creative in a sound way, you know, and like Rapport just seems like he's kind of a wild man, you know, so I don't, I don't know here. Um, take, take, let's do it this way. Check me. I dare you to check me. Check, always check. It might be mate. <laughs> All right. We're running away. And now my A-pawn is protected. Maybe I'll play King D3. Nah. That might have been an inaccuracy though. Maybe I should have played Rook B3 there. Maybe not a big deal, but a slight improvement. Perhaps Well here we are. Um the king managed to make the migration to the king side where it's a little better weather and um we've got well I would say the center actually. He still got kind of compensation, but the pawn on A five Fixing that pawn on b7 could actually work out for me. I'm very close to organizing sort of like bishop move and doubling rooks on the b file. And the knight can support f4 break. Bishop d6 is... Okay, let's just play this. <clears throat> He's going to surround my pawn, actually. Um... <clears throat> Alright, anyway, I can't double rooks as long as my rooks aren't connected. A troll just blundered. He blundered his pawn on b7. It was a good fight until that. Um, here, according to the engine, he's only marginally worse. I would agree with that assessment. But the more that we trade stuff... 
the more that extra doubled pawn actually counts. Meh. Maybe I played a decent chess 960 game. I didn't really like my position at the opening, but my center pawn loss is much lower than than what I would typically get in chess 960. Usually it's like through the roof. Minus, it's like a, a 60 center pawn loss or something. It looks like I'm at, down around 17. That's not bad for chess 960. Troll also played fine until the blunder at the end. Not a bad game by me, if I do say so myself. Um, only 16 cent upon loss and two inaccuracies. One of the inaccuracies... Wow, I didn't get an inaccuracy from the computer till move 11. Where is move 11, anyway? Uh, I don't think he's here in the morning. He's not a night owl. Okay, not a bad game. Let's continue. Um, I got challenges from Mule Skinner, Soltigo, Arsenal fan, and then um, Nefidov, Quam. And Koto. I'm just going to call you Koto from now on because it's too hard to say all those syllables. All right. Mule Skinner, good morning. Thank you guys for supporting the stream by. He has boring too. Okay. Well, I mean, you don't have to worry about boring games that much with, with Ivanchuk. But okay, there are some draws and stuff. But basically, he just loves playing chess. Um, so normally, he's, you know, totally willing to to take risks and but in a much more sound way than the wild crazy rapport games knight f3 d5 um what does mule skinner play now he usually plays the benko or had been playing the benko let's see what are we going to do here well it's it's not a weird wednesday stream because i can play whatever i want to um the boring King's Indian attack. Let's just play d4. But I just thought, you know, that this guy was off base, you know, comparing Ivanchuk to Rapport. Okay, okay, they're both creative, you know, but... Rubinstein, c5. Considered by many to be the best move. Okay, let's take on c5, play a queen's gambit, accepted. Rubinstein style. Anti-cheat Lee chess members? Is that really justice bot? Is that the real justice bot or just someone pretending to be justice bot? Um, there's someone cheating and streaming now live on Lee chess. <clears throat> Is that me? It is really just a spot. All right, um, someone's cheating and streaming. It's you, okay. Um, I don't know, like who's who's in charge of anti-cheating on Lee Chess? Um, I just report my. Oh, Danny the donkey. Um, Donkey the Danny. Oh, God. I don't think Magnus is streaming. Knight c6 now. Can you afford to do that? I think he's an official. <laughs> is that a real link? Some kind of porno or something he just put on there. Donkey the Danny. It's the real justice bot. I was I was afraid you were an imposter. FM underscore justice bot. I never remember if uh, if someone's spelling of their exact account. All right, Knight C six. Um, how does how does he get away with playing this like super aggressive move here against my reverse queen's gambit accepted i think i had this once i played a3 it seems like a live link but he's playing on chess.com that's where he belongs wow he found the place where he belongs i mean that's what chess.com was made for um basically cheating with computers oh no 
I forgot all I talk about is like cheating with computers. All right. Um, A5. Here, I guess we can play knight c3 or something and try to hang on to the pawn. Speaking of Rockport, this looks very Rockportian. He's cheating on both. Well, I don't know, like, which Lee Chess, you know, which Lee Chess admins are, like, in charge of anti cheating versus just other stuff. What do I do now? Am I supposed to play knight a4? Wait, yeah, maybe that's worth a try. I was thinking e4, but then bishop takes c5, pawn takes pawn, queen b6, no. Um, I could play e4, but then d4, actually, knight f6. You can play both, I guess, e4 or knight a4 here. Um, I don't know. I mean, it looks good just to go knight a4. We'll, we'll see. Yeah, report him. Nothing like the, the live streaming cheater. That's good. Like, evidence. That's intelligent. But nothing would surprise me. All right, knight a4. We're hanging on to the pawn. Um, this is kind of like a variation white would play against the queen's gamut accepted. A very aggressive variation. Like I consider d4, d5, c4, pawn takes pawn, knight c3 as like basically one of the most aggressive ways you can, you can conceivably play against the queen's gamut accepted. And I think against that, um, black's can maybe try to punish it by playing knight c6 and, and like d5 knight a5 type of stuff and so we're basically doing that with an extra move in hand so if we can do the same thing with an extra move in hand if it's already good when we're playing with colors reversed it has to be very very good here where we've got an extra move i mean i could always play like knight b6 but i want to hold on to this pawn so now What do we do? Do we play? <laughs> Is it a friend of yours? I've got to develop my pieces, but which way is the best? Um, Bishop E3. Bishop E3, I don't know about that. Knight f6 followed by knight g4 will be coming. There is like c3 followed by b4. That doesn't do much for our development. <sighs> Sigh. I don't know um, what I like best here. He's not threatening anything yet, but eventually he'll regroup the pawn on c5 if I don't protect it. I don't play the queen's gamut accepted much. The last time I played the queen's gamut accepted was against Rafael Letao, and I had like a knight on a7, and I swore I'd never play the opening again. Um, you know, that was like a long time ago, so I've lived up to my promise. But I think the Queen's Gamut Accepted seriously is a good opening. More more people should play it. It's not it's not very commonly played for some reason. I guess it's just not a ro very romantic opening. E three followed by C four. Let's just develop routinely. I just going with my instincts after two minutes, <laughs> two minutes of, of thinking in circles. It's like one of my tournament games where I think for 15 minutes. 
I sit there and think for 15 minutes about all the stuff I don't play and then wonder why I'm in time pressure at the end of the game. We're putting pressure on the guy's center here with the C4 move and also protecting my knight on A4. I guess he can try to regain his pawn. I mean, worst case scenario, I lose the pawn back. It's not that bad a deal. The other thing is that a5 creates a lot of weaknesses in this position. I mean, I, I always have this problem when I'm playing the white side of the Slav or the Queen's Gambit accepted. You know, anytime you play a5 or a4, respectively with colors reversed, you know, I mean, you're like, oh man, these squares are so weak and you've always got to worry about a knight sinking into one of those squares. I mean, I could just play knight b6 and give him the pawn in exchange for the bishop pair. Guys, I'm going to get out of here a few minutes early. Usually I stream until 2, 12.30, but I'll probably leave around 12.15 today. Um, okay, queen c7. Kind of an unexpected move. He's certainly not castling queenside. Maybe just bishop d2. Somehow I kind of like bishop d2 and, and like <laughs> rook c8. Does he want to put his rook on, on d8 or something? I feel like I'm not developing my king side, but that's okay for now, temporarily. Normally... Normally in the Queen's Gambit accepted, you're like uh, Fian Catawing usually with like B4, but I guess I'm also theoretically toying with B4 here, though it wasn't my plan. Bishop D2 also puts pressure on his, his pawn on A5. It doesn't do much for my king side development, but then again, his king side development isn't exactly expedient. Um, Well, it might be up upon black's development is so natural so natural his bishop's still on f8 he's not exactly uh running me off the board here um bishop e7 castles and, and connect the rooks i understand but i have no no issues okay like he can try to put a knight on e4 also, um, I'm basically planning a rook c1 and then to anchor that pawn on c5. There it is. Now, prophylactically thinking, if I take on d5, I open up Mr. Mule Skinner's bishop. So let's not do that and say we did. I'm up a pawn, okay, and that's more important to me than any old isolated pawn on d5. But I guess I might have to be careful about rook d8 or something of that ilk. Um, if he does like rook d8, I'll probably take on d5 and, and close down temporarily the d-file. So at least my queen doesn't get in any trouble. And my other plan was to play queen c2, which is a very normal kind of plan. I'm having second thoughts about this. But I think it's okay. Knight takes d2, queen takes d2. My knight on a4 is hanging, but he doesn't have a real good discovery. So that's um, not a problem. Maybe something like knight takes d2, queen takes d2, d takes c4. Here we go. I was just thinking about this. And D takes C4, I have maybe 
Well, can I take, or should I think about taking with a knight here on d2? I don't know. He can take on c4 now, and after bishop takes c4, knight e5. But it doesn't really do anything, actually. He's playing the exact variation I just mentioned. He could even take with a rook, but that's kind of weird. Not developing a piece. We're just up a pawn. I don't like my bishop on c4. It just feels like it's exposed to attack. Everything's protected and he didn't get his pawn back. Other than that, maybe I should go for the bishop there with the chance to play, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Knight, knight b6 and knight takes d7. Whoops, forgot uh, our b2 pawn is hanging there. Can't take with the queen. Hmm. Knight on b6 isn't doing a whole lot. Let's reposition. New and green are pastures. Oh. If queen is close to getting trapped, perhaps. No direct... Um, convincing well that's attacking my pawn darn whoa I don't know about this. I feel like I messed this up a bit. gonna win a piece how do we get my knight out I just don't let his king approach it stay where you are in your zone stay in the zone Still not so easy to get my knight out. It's kind of weird. <laughs> this is a little weird. Should have played e4, I thought. He's letting my knight out. It was corralled. It could have been kind of a difficult position to win. There.
got under control finally. Control. My knight is trapped again. But that's okay. <laughs> that's fine. All right. Um, I don't know. Like, was there a moment where you were okay? Because, I mean, it's not such an easy ending. I don't think this is so easy, but the computer thinks I'm just winning. Wow. So I missed bishop b5, apparently. Um, I didn't calculate this properly. That's kind of crushing, I guess. A mm. little too low on time. Um, I almost let it get out of control, though. With the knight on a7, let's see. No, before that. When was the position where I had my knight on c8 here? Yeah, I mean, after e4 check, basically, I'm tied down to e3. And I was having trouble envisioning how exactly I win this. I mean, if only I had my bishop on c6 and I could sacrifice it on e4, but now I'm like tied down. You know, is this... I'm a clear piece up here and I don't really see how to win. Is that possible? Like, how do you win this? Seriously. Knight on c8 is dominated, and, and I'm tied down to the e3 pawn, and it seems like he has endless waiting moves. That is seriously messed up. I mean, I'm up a clear piece, and he has the move h4, because if he doesn't have h4, I guess I can play g4, even that's... g4 looks like um, it might it might win if I'm on the move here, but without that, if he plays h4... This clear piece up and I can't win. I mean, it's not really much of a piece, actually, the knight on c8. It's really insane. I mean, you'd think there'd be some study like trick or something, but I can bring my bishop back around, um, but what's that going to do? Or put my... There's nothing I can do. It's like a fortress. That's really stupid. <laughs> um, all right. So next is Soltigo. Um... We've got white pieces with Soltigo, Mr. Mr. Creative. But I like playing Soltigo. He's kind of a self-taught player, so it's always kind of funny and interesting to play him. He doesn't have any biases. Extremely creative. I like the last game you played against me, this casual game we played the other game the other day. It was an isolated queen pawn position, Soltigo. Now the Dutch against C4 I think is is perfectly good. Whereas against knight f3, I don't think it's as as reliable. Um, all right, let's just play straight up Dutch. Yeah, the Hawaiian background will be coming back a little later in the year. I should I should bring it here for cheering up uh, this this gray weather. It's like perpetually gray and probably similar to your weather. Um, out there in Pacific Northwest, um, this uh, this this uh, Dutch is yes, yeah, so some sort of Simon Williams thing. The um, no, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean when in the summertime I go to uh, I go back to visit the U.S. You're talking about my summertime. My summertime, I'm actually in a different place, you know, when you saw the, you know that though. The, the Hawaiian background is, is a different place. That's why it looks different. Deep, huh? 
the Anglo Dutch. It's just a Dutch. Even when Simon Williams was a little kid, he was playing the Dutch. Yeah, I'm in Hungary now. But I hope to go back to the U.S. Uh, to visit in, like, July. We'll bust out the Hawaiian background again. The tiki. The wiki tiki. Scooby-Doo episode. All right, G3, C5. This is weird, man. Okay, it's like you're playing F5 in an, in an Anglo-symmetrical English. That doesn't look right. I'm just going to play like knight f3. I mean, you could play d5 here. But I think I like knight f3 better. And this move is highly suspicious in this position. f5 just kind of sticks out. Looks uh, inappropriate here. All right. Knight f3, c takes d4. Portlandia. Knight c6. This f5 move. <laughs> that is totally appropriate. Alright. Bishop d2, trading dark squared bishops, or knight c3. They're both good. I really wouldn't mind you taking my knight off, man, and doubling, I mean, isolating. You can go ahead and isolate my pawns if you want to. Both moves are good. Bishop d2, you could argue, like, I'm trading his good bishop, you know? And so, that's the guardian of all the dark squares. I mean, any kind of... He's got all these weaknesses on the dark squares. Because he's playing a white square pawn structure. So, if he ever trades this guy, particularly because of f5, I mean, he's going to be riddled with weaknesses. This is, I wouldn't call it a Dutch. Um, it's a symmetrical English with the random F5 move. It's no longer a Dutch. When he decided to play C5, we left Dutch territory, I think. I think I poured a little too much tea in my, in my coffee cup. All right. So, guys, the next stream will be um, Sunday. I'm going to do a 30-player simul. 20-player simul, sorry. 30, I just usually flag all the games. Um, we'll try 20 players on Sunday. That's manageable. All right. Um, so what do we do now? Good question. Good question. It is not that obvious what the plan is here i guess knight b5 we'll try to establish a knight on d6 we can do that but what else can i do finding a plan here isn't so easy i guess you could do something like e3 and queen e2 and rook d1 um knight b5 i was tempted to play but if a6, knight d6, and then he just attacks the knight on d6 again. We'll have to take his bishop on c8, which I'm almost sorry to do that. I mean, it's such a really bad piece. I think playing something like knight b5, knight d6, and knight takes c8 is sort of... It's sort of sad, you know, to take that bishop on c8. I wouldn't really consider that a plan. Um, but I'm running out of ideas here. Knight c2 looks passive. As I said, e3 is okay. I don't know what to do. Um, I don't like a3 particularly.
Mihai Suba would play like Rook B1 or something. <laughs> Ultra subtle, like take on C3, please. Um, no, I don't know what to do. Not that easy to find a plan here. I'm addicted to like using time to find the right plan. All right, whatever. I don't know what to do. Queen C2 drops a piece. Other than that, it's a good move. Um, I like the I like the idea, but wait a second. Now you brought me an idea. Maybe that was the move. Queen B3. Arsenal fan, you're like a genius. I mean, maybe Queen B3. No, no, I'm losing the exchange. All right, never mind. Knight takes D4. Knight C2. Ah. Uh, I thought you were a genius for a second, but it loses material, <laughs> at least in exchange. Maybe I could lose a whole rook with queen b3. So I don't know. Um, if a6, a3, pawn takes a5. Yeah, that's good. I have to go knight d6, and this is the original plan that I was talking about. He's not letting me get into d6. I have c7. Ivanchuk would like that. There's also bishop f4, but there's also simply a3 now. I think this is just just good for white. So I'm serious. I think he should have played a6, knight d6, and then maybe queen c7. Or he could do this move, like a move later. Now I like white. If he has to give up the bishop, he's in a very bad way here. And if he doesn't, then I'm I'm probably getting his bishop anyway, with like b4. The dark squared bishop, you know, it's not a piece he can really afford to trade. But he'll have to. Okay, queen e7 shores up the dark squares a little bit by controlling d6, but black's position looks it looks creepy. Um H4 an idea. Say what? For Soltico, maybe, like, h4 would be an idea. But not for me. He's planning to play h5, h4. <laughs> but I've, I'm not really, you know, thinking about that here. This just looks good. No, I'm serious. Like, he should have played a6. And uh, I don't know how bad it is, actually. a6, knight d6, queen, e7. I could try to play bishop f4, but I guess, I mean, maybe I can play bishop f4 there, try to induce him to play e5, but I don't think that really actually is even beneficial for me. Now we just work him over with the bishop pair on the dark squares. We put the bishop on the long diagonal and take things. That's the plan. Oh my god. Wow, what a pawn sacrifice. Just like, here, have it. If you're going to have it, just have it. I admire your... I admire your openness. So what if I take and then, well, he'll probably take with the knight just to be annoying. He didn't. Giving us an extra option to play bishop g5. What would Ivan Chuk do? It's like a Tarash. It's the ultimate Tarash. We got our pieces developed, and he has an isolated pawn on d5. But I want to take on my terms if I can. He has an itty bitty amount of compensation after like knight takes d5, knight takes d5, queen takes d5, check. Yes, white is winning, but you have to have excellent technique. Um, I thought this way might be a little more clean. 
Now we're not playing for material, we're just gonna like decimate his pawn structure. Which is actually better than being a pawn up, I think. Bishop takes or knight takes? It's so hard to make choices. They're both good. It's so hard to decide which way to take here. Um, all right. So I opted not for material, but for, for structure and, uh, Black's position is ugly, but, but still clinging to life. B7 is really hanging now. Uh-huh. But this is, this is a clean pawn. Sort of. Trying to find a good square for my queen, though. I guess this is a good one. Not the greatest, but we'll take it. Queen g7. Queen g7 would have been best. Avoiding the trade of queens and... Now h4 is appropriate. I like it now. Just so we don't get back rank mated and also creating some mating threats of our own. I always joke about the Dutch, like when you play the Dutch, <laughs> like the seventh rank is always weak and so all rook end games are lost. Um, when white gets like a rook on the seventh rank or something. A right, self, self immolation. Um, yeah, I like this man. It was very entertaining, but you were, you were still alive. Uh, kind of. Whoa. Sox Jula played this against Gurgiu and drew. <laughs> that is so sad. What was Sox thinking? It was 1975. He was very young. Um, but I mean, you know, it was the 70s, and I think he must have been... I don't know if they had any access to drugs here in, in Hungary in 1975, but... That... That is a really bizarre move, man. Alright. Simacek also did this. In the 2017... I know this guy. Um, he's a decent player, but f5? For real? Anyway, um, I was curious about this position. You know, what the best move is. Actually, for me and for black at this point. The computer comes up with bishop f4. And it crossed my mind for a minute. But I guess... I guess I figured a6, and then what do I do? After bishop f4. Stopping knight b5. And then the computer comes up with the ultra <laughs> sick move e3, like trying to trap your own bishop on f4. Anyways, um, easy for a computer to come up with that. You should have played a6. This is the line that I said a6, knight d6, queen c7. And if I have to take that sad bishop on c8, maybe your position isn't so bad. You know, this 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 isn't so bad because you, you got rid of the horrible, horrible piece on c8 and all of your pieces are in the game. And it's, you've got a backward pawn on the d file, but I also have to face pressure down this line. So that would have been the best for black. All right, Arsenal fan is up next. Um, and then Nefidov, and then we'll play some other challenges. Troll is challenging me again. Hey, take back. What's up? He changed his name to FM Injustice Bot. Oh. <laughs> you 
You made a friend. All right. I love the trolls on the internet, man. Let's uh, play white again. Wow, it's a lot of whites today. Arsenal fan. Um, I'm kind of in a mood to play D4. I enjoyed the last game a lot. I can't believe that Julius Sachs actually played F5 in that position. Nineteen seventy five though, he was really young. Let's see what Arsenal fan knows. He plays the Queen's Gambit declined or something. I'm I'm basically kinda of giving up on the Queen Queen's Gambit trying to get an advantage, I guess. A lot of people play Bishop F four, but that's not really not really any better. I guess you just have to play E four and you still don't get an advantage. Everyone is like playing the Catalan um, and they still keep finding ways to win With the Catalan with white You love the internet in general so many pictures and videos here, uh-huh well, Let's not go into too much detail on that subject Knight f3 He has a sense of humor I wonder who it is. Is it someone that you know? Um, is the player like playing any moves on their own or is it just uh, just completely like regurgitating what the computer says? This, uh, this cheating troll. I think we had a game like this once before Arsenal fan where you You played the Tartakover, like some people do this, they'll like play the Tartakover without playing h6. But I guess there's nothing wrong with that, you know? Every single move. So is it just like a total beginner or, or like an intermediate player who just likes cheating with a computer? Is there any way to tell? Just by their, do they do they make comments about the moves and stuff? It sounds like kind of good entertainment. Um, all right, Bishop B seven. Now, taking on F six, and then Black has played without H six. Occasionally, people do this. I guess it's it's better for Black to have H six than not have H six. Um. A 700 is cheating him back while he's 800. Sad, but but entertaining. At least he can do it. On, let him do it on chess.com. That's better. I have to take here. There was a simul game like a week or two ago where I forgot to take on d5. <laughs> if Black just takes on c4, maybe that was against you, Arsenal fan. Oh shit, it was against you. Now I remember. It was exactly this line, right? And I just castled like an idiot and let you take on c4. I mean, this is the entire con concept for white. I'm, I'm like, it's forced. I have to trade pawns on d5. That's why I traded on f6. But I forgot to make the like capture on d5 against Arsenal fan last time we played in the simul on Sunday. Wow, my, my brain still works. I have actual memories. I thought the Alzheimer's was really getting to me, but it came through. Um, yeah, he has to take with the pawn. I mean, this is Karpov's... I don't know that Karpov was the first one who who played this, but anyway, he used it a lot in the match against Kasparov. Arsenal just instantaneously played knight d7. Well, this is a book position with the pawn on h6. Um, I don't think that makes much difference, really. And so... You're supposed to play either c5, Kasparov's first reaction, or c6, which is like the later the later move, uh, which became kind of the main line now. But Arsenal fan just plays knight d7. I mean, if you think about it logically, 
why would c6 and c5 be the main moves if knight d7 was good you know you can like reverse engineer the answer however there is a kind of weird move like b5 looks like obvious you know But seriously, is this a blunder because of b5, knight, c5? I've never actually considered it, but maybe it's it's a terrible mistake to play b5 here. Because black just plays knight, c5, <laughs> and he can go knight, e4. So I guess, in reality, there's no, um, there's no real punishing black's move order. We just play queen, d5. I guess ninety seven just restricts his options. Um, now he like has to play c six, and he's he's forfeited his option to play um, you know c six instead of I mean c c five instead of c six, unless he wants to sack a pawn here, which I don't think is good. Trolling the trolls. You must be bored. All right. Yeah, I was thinking of closing my chess.com account, but I don't know why I don't. I mean, I never ever go there. Queen b3. Nothing to look at here. Maybe I have so b5 next. But I'm not sure like how great it really is. Like c6, b5. I've seen some strong players manage this kind of pawn structure where they allowed the pawn to be broken, the pawns to be broken. c6, b5. Depending on the situation, sometimes black can get away with it. Like, maybe C takes B5. Queen takes B5. Knight C5 again. With weird complications. It's almost kind of like... It's very tempting to play B5, but I'm not sure that it's actually the best move. After takes on B5... I had a game like that in another simul. But I do have Bishop takes B5. And I stay on the D5 pawn. And it's almost impossible for him to defend e5. Like, he'd have to play knight b8 or something. Castles transposes to a game I had with Urosh Andrash, this guy who's actually Mr. Bad Beat on here. We had a draw in the, in the Budapest Team Championship. Um, I think that he played the move order correctly for black, but the position could transpose. Um, but b5 is very tempting. b5 takes on b5, bishop takes b5. Okay, I could even take on d5 there, come to think of it. That's probably better for white. I'm not really sure, but whatever. Oh, you're just sacking the d5 pawn. I don't think I looked at this enough. He might have some weird tricks. Well, that was calculated. So I take with the pawn and then play knight e3. He's got all sorts of tactics. Pff, 
I don't really see another choice. He's got this all worked out. Actually, Arsenal fan is over 2,000 now. I. It's so weird when I see your flag. I'm like, it's a Georgian flag at first. It's an English flag. Okay, 2001. 2001, he made it 2001 rapid. Congratulations. I, I don't think that Arsenal fans been over 2000 here before. All right, that looks like a mistake. He's got Knight C5 in this position when I was getting nervous, but I figure I'm probably okay somehow, but maybe not. My king is going to get messed up after knight c5. I think you missed the you missed the boat there. But maybe not. He's got a different plan. Once again, play too quickly. I mean, it seems more natural to play rook rook e8. But who am I to criticize? I mean, maybe this is this is good enough compensation. So I really like fell into some kind of trap with b5. This is just bad for white. Looks like it. It's a very, very strange move order. No one plays knight d7 there. But I can play queen c4 here and be up a pawn. not trading queens. I just have a feeling that black is okay here. At some point you just have to like admit that you messed up, you know, and, and like not lose because you're being too proud to admit that it's equal, you know. And I think I'm at that stage now where I could over overreach myself. Rook d1, knight f4, castles, rook c8, resigns. I just have to accept that it's equal. Maybe black's even like infinitesimally better with the opposite colored bishop. But it should be a draw probably. He's got three minutes more than me. Although this is kind of a weakness. And maybe f7 is just as weak as f2. So it's it's basically like both sides have to be a little bit careful. If I can land the first bloke here though, I, I take the pawn and maybe I can do something. I still think that objectively it's <clears throat> it's probably a draw. Even if I win a pawn. Oh, well, wow, what a move. Um, bishop a3. Sneaky. That was, that was tricky. But you got to worry about f7 too. I understand.
All right, we go for it here. convenient square Arsenal fan, I mean, it's, uh, what's going on here? Perpetual. It was too hard with the amount of time I had to figure out how to win. All right. Maybe it is a draw anyway um, at that point. Probably it's the draw, even if I played the best possible move. This is the best defense. Yeah, apparently it's still a draw, even even with my best best moves. Maybe he was never actually lost, but he was really really trying. I mean, I sacked the exchange. Was the only try to win this. So here I messed up. I should have played rook c7. Hmm. Instead of bishop c6, I was worried about pushing my pawns, but I should have played this first. But I think I'm not winning, you know? It's just, it's not winning. It's just a draw, um, objectively. All right. Anyway, like, that's weird about the opening. Um, I, I don't know. Like, nobody plays knight d7 here. This is very strange. Literally no moves, no games with 97, zero. And it's like a good move or what? Like why would there be zero games here with 97? And so B5 is just a blunder. But castles transposes to main mainline theory. Well, it's not really a main line. Okay, there's not too many games. That's strange. I guess this this here, rookie eight. There's no games here. A five. We would think I would think we would get some transpositions. That's very weird. There's nothing wrong with this position, is there for black? Queen e seven. I don't know. Okay, that's weird. Um, so b5 is just bad. Straight up stockfish c5. And I thought that I'm good here, but I'm actually worse after this. And he just missed the best move. Knight c5. And black has the initiative. Alright, good to know. 
But I mean, this should transpose, I would think, to something like normal. There's only a couple games. Farago Ivan against Rigo Janos. Hmm. I guess Black has no way to prevent B5 now. Now B5 will be good. And he can't stop it. So that's the problem. Something like A5, B5. Damn, according to the computer, you can play A4. Knight takes A4 as a pawn sacrifice. Black is okay. That's also like a simul game I had uh, a couple weeks ago. All right. Interesting game. Quam. We're going to play Nefidov first, and then some other challenges. I'm streaming till 2.15. I don't know. I mean, probably I'll play like four more games, I would, I would imagine. I'm not going to play Troll a second game. He already played, so I would imagine like four more games, given the time control. Probably VBN. Something around there. There's a rated challenge, guys. I don't play rated here on my stream because I'm in vicious time pressure talking about the games every time. Um, if you challenge me to raid it and I canceled it, just re-challenge. So I figure Quam, Koto, and VBN will probably get to play. Uh, actually, no. I said, yeah, that's about right. So Nef Nefidov is overrated. I think with 1688 he's more like he's more like 1400 not again all right I've got to do something different we've had this this variation like a bazillion times um, I tricked him with some kind of unusual move in the symmetrical English last time I wonder what he plays here if you do d4 right away. I guess we're going to find out. I was hoping for the e5 gambit because I've been studying that with one of my students. But he didn't he didn't go for it. I don't really know this line very well for white, but it it's just a kind of natural position. Wow, chicken I see. Thank you for subscribing. Romelda Fox says, 97 is not played because in the C6 lines, black would have the option of queen D6. Excellent point, Romelda Fox. Um, it was kind of sophisticated. I didn't really mention it, but yes, queen D6. Um, queen D6 is the move that Orosh Andrash played against me, I think, after C6. It's, it's a very typical plan. Um, I even had one opponent one time maneuver like bishop e7 d8 and bishop c7 to try to create a battery with the queen on d6 and bishop on c7 against my king side and i analyzed that a little bit with with andrash um in september when we played but it was like october or something i don't know but um yes queen d6 is is the problem black wants the queen on d6 but i fell for this trap Now, I didn't know that Nefidov plays the Accelerated Dragon. Gurga needs a variation. Thank you for subscribing again, man. Chicken IC. We've got um, Gurga needs a Accelerated Dragon. This is a line that I played for a time with Black. Never with very good results, but playing against the Marazzi period um, is really unpleasant for Black. You may you play my system against me. <laughs> yes, you invented the Marazzi. Nefidov, inventor of the Marazzi bind. Now you're playing my system against me. I invented, <laughs> I invented the accelerated dragon, and you invented the Marazzi bind. I've played this position so many times for black; it's just like ridiculous. But it's always a thankless task. 
If you're like a tactically oriented player, um, I don't really recommend playing the white side of this sort of line because there really aren't tactics. It's it's basically pure strategy and and like slow exploitation of a space advantage. Um, if you're facing the normal accelerated dragon and you're more like aggressive and attack motivated, um, you should play like systems with knight c3 rather than c4 probably. And after I was playing a rather rare, um, a rather rare line with a6 and, and that's not the standard system. Usually black will play knight takes d4 and uh, try to set up a dark square blockade. But I imagine there are there are plenty of games even in this sort of pseudo system with a6. I mean it's a natural enough idea for black to play for b5. If I play knight c2 now, um, we'd still be in another another line. Knight c2, knight e5, knight a3. Rook a c1. But it's almost like hard for him to play b5. Rook a c1, queen a5. Rook fd1. That's the problem though. And then he's getting in b5. No, because queen a5, knight b3. Knight takes d4. Bishop takes d4, and then queen a5, and then, then my position is stupid. So I probably should play knight c2. I had this position with black against um, Magnus Carlsen's dad. As strange as that sounds. This is this is Magnus Carlsen's dad versus me. And uh, I think infamous game where I didn't know who Magnus was. <laughs> Back in 2006, when he was like 2600 or 2570. I mean, I knew who he was, but I didn't know what he looked like. So when he was sitting there analyzing, Magnus and I had this like analysis session, arguing about moves like in the game with his dad. Um, and I was like telling my friend, there was this little kid, he was kind of a punk. He kept... Uh, he kept, you know, trying to argue with me in the analysis session. Um, Nefedov, I don't understand how you got so fast, man. For a guy who's 1688 in Blitz and 1400 in Bullet. So Magnus's dad lost to me, but then after in the analysis session, Magnus came in and we started analyzing and I was kind of holding Magnus like we were basically, you know, hanging with each other in the analysis session. Nobody was really like winning the analysis variations. It was kind of like a static equality, um, arguing over these moves in his in his dad's game, and and I still didn't know it was Magnus like till the next day. I thought it was just a punk kid um, who thought he was like really really good, and then the next day I had to play him in this rapid tournament. It was a funny story. Someday I'll, I'll write an article about it. Um, I think I had it in another game against some African IM. Rook b8 doesn't look right. Looks like Nefedov uh, up to screwed. The classic knight d5 shot. Unless you're going to sack your queen for two pieces. Knight takes d5, queen takes a5, knight takes e3. Not recommended. He may not be lost. Queen d8, bishop b6, queen e8. Hey, that's fun. But what do I do after that? I don't know. We'll figure it out as we as we go. We've got him sort of paralyzed, but I don't know how to finish him off. He's got me down to 34 seconds. Should offer a draw. 
This move may not even be my best move, I'm not sure. It's hard to believe it can be bad. But anything's possible. Yeah, I was like, oh, come on, kid. That variation can't be good. Get out of here and go. <laughs> go scram and play with your with your toys. Um, whoa, knight e8. That's, uh... That's seriously dangerous looking for black. Nefrov coming apart in the Magnus's dad variation. But I was black in this game, you know, that's that's the thing. I mean, I play the position for both sides, so. Although I don't really play knight c2. I've never actually played the variation with knight c2 myself personally. Um, I normally play like sort of typical setups with like rook c1 or something. Um, but this particular position, knight c2 seals in his bishop on d7. This this piece, these pieces, once he plays bishop d7, and it also happens in the Sicilian Skaven Ingen, um, you kind of want to keep him bottled up when he plays bishop d7. That's why I prefer to play knight takes d4. All right. We got all the subscribers taken care of, so we're just going to take some of these other challenges. I single-handedly helped create the monster that is Magnus. I beat your dad. Well, that's sort of like the time that... That's reminding me of the story when... When Hikaru, like, said the F word to John Fedorovich when he was a little kid. And he was like, F you, John. And John, John is very, you know, he has a very bad, bad temper. And once he almost tried to kill me over, like, drinking one of his beers. So, but John, like, knew he couldn't beat up Hikaru because he was, like, 12 years old or something. So he, he said he, he was threatening to beat up his dad. It's like, I'll beat up your dad if you ever say that again. Which I thought was kind of funny. Alright, Quam is playing the Rosalimo. We've played this a few times. Hikaru was a punk when he was a kid, but he's he's pretty cool now. Um, castles. Let's see. Bishop d7 is main line. He was always totally correct with me, though. I mean... I didn't play him when he was really little. I probably played him for the first time when he was like maybe 14 or something. But he was okay. But he had... Except for the time when he was like knocking over pieces against me in Blitz. In the time scramble, but... Mostly I like Hikaru. Alright, rookie one. I played A6 here the other day. Maybe against Quam, the same game. Um, I had the same game with Quam. I also played Knight F6, but in a previous game, uh, I had played A6 against some player, and uh, it just loses too much time. I saw Leko do that once, but I, I don't trust A6. Here, I don't know. You can do pretty much anything. This is not really a theoretical move, Knight C3. It's solid, though. You can't imagine a future super GM not being a punk. Um, well, it's all relative. All right. I don't know, E6, we can play G6.
I mean, after e6, d4, we can transpose back into some kind of open Sicilian type of position. But e6 is a little bit passive. It's like a bishop b5. Um, like a bishop b5 check, Carlson favorite, Sicilian, I guess. You could also exchange on d4 with the knight, but I don't know if I want to bring his queen to d4 necessarily. But if I don't, then he destroys my pawn structure at c6, which is pretty common happening around here. But what about knight takes d4, bishop takes b5, a6, just just trading and, and relieving my cramp, um, probably not a bad idea. He's got this nasty 95 stuff. There was this player who I suspected of being an engine who just cranked some kind of knight d5 sacrifice me on me once. Um, it was like all... Maybe it wasn't an engine, they were just using an opening book, and it had all been played before. And I was like, oh man, after the game I had realized that all these moves had been played before. This long sequence of sacrifices and stuff. Knight d5 is like staring me in the face there. I mean, it's, it's really dangerous. So I bring the queen out to d4, but I'm able to gain a little time kicking white back as well. Knight takes d6, check. Bishop takes d6, e5, draw. Um, probably. Like, this This would really be kind of drawish. But. He doesn't have bishop f4, thankfully, here. Building up pressure on, on the d6 pawn. It looks roughly equal. Unfortunately, I have to allow a lot of exchanges. I mean, this is really a very safe way for white to play. I wouldn't want to be black against against the punk kid, Magnus. Um, no. He wasn't really a punk. I just... I was thinking he was a punk because he was some random kid, you know. He was totally... He was totally um, well-behaved. Just... I made this joke, you know, because I thought it was some random. And, and, like, you know, he was relatively... He was relatively modest, you know, for being like a GM. Um, I'm just joking. Magnus was totally, his, his behavior is, is totally correct. Um, he's a respectful kind of person. But I was thinking he was just some random kid, you know, thought he was all that. But someday in my memoirs, I'll write the story. Quam is playing like a pro. So bishop g5, though. I mean, I might have to take back with the pawn in some variations, but we're going to try to avoid that if we can. We can do like the Ulf Anderson hedgehog defense with rook c6. the impenetrable pawn on d6 and then stack up my pieces on the file can't touch that pawn on d6 and then we try to turn the c file on him it's like a dunst opening where the knight on c3 shields this it gets kind of tied down to the pawn on c2 He still has e5 liquidating. Wow, rook d3. Now I should consider like taking some defensive measures probably. If I just ignore him, then again, I don't know. Um, queen c7 looks okay. I need to get some counterplay. Queen a5 even, rook g3. 
Or should I try to trade pieces here with knight d7? That's my question. Is it a good idea or not? Guys, we have time for at least two more games after this. I think just two, exactly, most likely. Um, yeah, I just realized I have queen b6. It's a damn strong move. Unless it sucks, which is the other possibility. But getting the queens off here disables his, uh, his prospects of an attack. And I think that's a pretty darn good idea for black. Because this build up with rook g3 and shifting over to the other side looks... Looks a little, a little annoying. Forcing a trade of queens, and all end games are good for black in the Sicilian. That's what they say. And I don't know if that's always true, but for the most part, white tends to overextend themselves with with the white side of the Sicilian. I think here Quam has been very controlled, though he he only played like e4 and a4. It's not like he pushed up all his kingside pawns. That's why that quote is is basically you know, existing, like those typical Sicilian attacking positions where white like overextends themselves. If the attack doesn't work, then you have a bad end game. Um, it's not the case here though. I'm just making a generic assumption. Um, yeah, okay, Karyakin played brilliantly in the World Championship match. That was sort of sad in a way. If you're rooting for Karyakin. Okay, now pawn takes e5, queen takes e5, knight g4. Has some appeal to it. Though there could be some perverse sort of. Uh, counter trick pawn takes e5 queen takes e5 knight to g4 and now let's say queen g3 what do i do knight takes f2 with smothered mate threats then he has bishop e3 counter threat winning a piece that's what i'm talking about that's a good variation. Takes e5, queen takes e5, knight g4, queen g3, knight takes f2, bishop e3 resigns. Um, pawn takes, queen takes, knight, damn. I could even play like the queen takes f2 check. That's insane. Takes, takes, check your takes. Does that really work? It really works, I think. But it's getting a little too complicated for me in this time control situation. I mean, B2 is just hanging in a lot of lines. Queen takes F2 check, King takes F2, Knight G4 check, King. Where's this King going? Back to g1, takes on e5. If bishop takes e7, knight takes d3. If king f1, knight takes d3, bishop takes f8, knight takes e1. I'm still winning. Um, queen takes f2 check, king takes f2, knight g4 check, king somewhere. Knight takes e5. Now rook takes e5, and that's the question. Then I have f6. But he has rook d7. But that doesn't change anything. But at the end of the day, um, will the Golko bishop on e7 be that strong? Oh man, but that king f1 will kill him if he puts his king on f1. So we can't put his king on f1 in that variation. And then we're going like knight g4. He can play queen h4 here, but... 
That would take the fun out of the game. All this analysis for nothing after queen h4, just like a towel. I could just play anything. Queen b4. I like queen b4. Except for the fact that he has bishop takes f6 there. Still, it's probably... Yeah, that's probably good for white. Queen h4, queen b4 is a problem. So let's can that idea and uh, try something different. And queen h4 is clearly best. Defending f2. I don't know if Quam is actually listening to the analysis. Maybe not, because he probably would play the other variation. In Soviet Russia, you do not sacrifice pieces. Where did you get this quote from? Be careful where you put your king. Maybe king g3. I didn't really think about that. There is no safe place to put your... There it is. But I have an extra little secret. You know, this whole variation only works because my rook defends the e6 pawn laterally. He also has um, bishop h4. But what if he had done it in the other line? Like, thankfully, he played a kind of non-critical continuation here. Guys, I have time for two last games. So I don't know what was really going on. I like queen h4. Maybe there's a problem with it. The computer's probably like, oh, you just take the pawn on b2. See, it's dropping like a rock now, Black's evaluation. I was afraid of, of rook h3, you know, seriously. I mean, this is pretty, pretty straightforward. Clearly white's best try, um, unless something else works. Rook takes e5, apparently the best, but that's okay. Slightly better for, for me. Um, so apparently I should have done knight g4. I... I thought queen g3, though, wasn't that clear. But I guess we have this Boris Golko-like bishop. <laughs> it's it's okay for black. All right, I'm not going to complain here. I didn't see queen takes b2. So I got a little bit fancy, maybe, with queen takes f2 check. Apparently, he has a slight advantage. Check king e2, which is very, very weird. A very surprising move, blocking his own rook from protecting e5, and then after knight takes e5, bishop takes e7, knight takes d3. C takes d3. That makes complete sense. I have a rook and pawn for bishop and knight. Okay, it's it's a position. Um, all right, guys. Next game, Koto Amatsumaki, Amatsukami, Foxborough. They're not playing in Foxborough. It's in Minneapolis, and it's going to be snowing on Sunday. Or is it on Saturday? When is the Super Bowl? I'm clueless. All right, we've got five plus three. Guys, I've got to go in 25 minutes. So one more challenge after this, the most. How many over the board games do I have? You're talking to me? Um, probably like 2000 or something, I mean. It's got to be in the thousands. 
for years I've played over 100 games a year. I mean, so you got to have... I've got to have over 2,000. I mean, probably well, well in the 2,000s. What am I doing? Knight f3, e6. I'll typically just play um, kind of reti. White always starts first. Yep. On the internet, yes. What does that mean, troll? <laughs> like, once I played this guy in a pub in Romania who didn't know how to set up the pieces right. Like, he had the board. I mean, he knew how to set up the pieces, but he set up the board, like, sideways. So, so the, you know, colors were wrong. Like, the queen square and the king square were wrong. But I, you know, I was drinking beers in the pub, and I, I didn't really care, you know, about how some random guy, you know, sets up the pieces. And, and I'm not going to correct him, you know. I thought, okay, whatever. I ended up losing, like, this casual game to this guy who... He didn't even know, like, the right colors to set up the board. I mean, that's crazy. I couldn't believe it. I was like, this guy must be trolling me. I mean, okay, I was a little drunk or something, and I didn't play my best, but but still, like, to lose to somebody who literally doesn't know how to set up the board, that was pretty strange. Now, I guess we have to watch for c5 and d4. I mean, this is a pretty standard setup, one would imagine, for black. So, well, if I play d3, he's going to play c5, and then we can go into a ray t. I guess Kasparov played this with white for a time. Kasparov. He had some games with, maybe he had a game or two with, with Karpov in the World Championship in like 1986 or whatever. When did they play? Oh yeah, that'll be the next thing. Like, right. They're taking away the sports teams references to to Indians. They'll make like it, it racist to start chess with white. No. What was the latest thing? Well the Canadian anthem is getting changed. Or something like that, because it it, it doesn't um you know, it, it references like men or something I don't know about changing all this historical stuff it seems kind of weird but anyway this is a chess stream bishop b7 let's just play d4 it's not much for white though I think this position is is immediately about equal for black I wasted two minutes shooting the shit here Yeah, that was the, the scandal about that. All right. Koto Amatsumaki Tsukami. I, I'm just going to call you Koto because I can't deal with saying that anymore. Looks like a really good um, plan for black. What if I played A4? Well, he just has nothing here. I'm tempted to play a4 and a5 because he played rook c8 so early. But I doubt it's great. But now I regret putting my knight on d2. Because if I wanted to play c takes d, I should probably put my knight on c3. But that rook on c8 is a bit funny. Maybe I can play bishop h3 in some positions, like now. <laughs> some positions, like randomly now. All right, I like the rook on b8. It has very little significance there. 
we're happy for that. Now we can play rook c1. This looks okay. But Kunto Atsumaski, he just plays fast. He, he tries to win on time every game. Um, I was complaining about it last time. I really try to teach people to take their time and try to play the best possible moves. It seems like he can't slow down. Just plays like bullet every game. Okay, my time usage, I've been just kind of talking about stuff here. I, I didn't, I used too much time. I'm, I'm like not setting a good example in a way, but. It should be slightly better. Is black going to play f5? Okay, he can't do it right away. Maybe if I have time to play like rook d1. This changes the structure a lot though. I can take on e4 and it's much different now. I'm just winning a pawn. Yesterday there was this guy who got all pissed at me because I, he thought I was slow rolling him. Like I had a mate in two and I literally didn't see it forever. Like it took me 15 seconds to see it. And, uh, and by the time I saw it, I was like laughing at myself, like Arsenal fan or something. And the guy was out, he was outraged. How could you not play that mate? You were purposely doing it, you know, just to tease me. I was like, dude, man, get on the paranoid wagon there. <laughs> I'm an international master. I'm not like the world champion. You know, I, I do like not see mates in two sometimes. But we're basically taking this clear pawn and very happy to do it here. All right, guys, I've got to go in like 15 minutes. So this game and one more, and then I'm out. Um, Black played too fast. It's an increment game. If you're not used to playing with five plus three, I can understand Black's time use here. You know, he's basically maybe playing like it's five zero. Um, but you've got to remember that don't try to flag people who have an increment. You can't play just for the flag. Well, you can, but you shouldn't. He's got queen d5, which is really annoying. Sort of. That darn queen d5 move. Twenty-seven seconds left. All my pieces are in play. But I don't really have 27 seconds. I have 27 seconds plus three seconds per move. I'll have a minute to play the next 20 moves, basically. That's why you can't flag people. I, I learned that very early on, back in like 2003, when they first started using increment. I had this game with Teddy Coleman. I was winning the whole game, but I had food poisoning like before that game and I hadn't eaten in in like 24 hours. And uh, I was just like having trouble winning, having trouble winning forever in this game. Um, that's just hanging in exchange. And uh, I just tried to flag him. I was like tired and, and he's got this like five second delay or whatever. And I'm trying to like win on time. You know, it was the most pathetic thing ever. And I just ended up losing a winning position. Rematch. <laughs> Last game, guys. You cannot play for time when you've got an increment. I mean, maybe with a one second and two second increments. Okay, but in a five second delay or you know, forget about 30 second increments. Um, don't try to do it in a tournament game where the other guy has a 30 second increment. 
You don't understand why they're using increment instead of delay. I don't know, troll. It's like FIDE got hooked on this increment thing and the US Chess Federation started out using delay. But delay makes a lot of sense. You know, it just it just means that you have five seconds to like, you know, make your move without getting flagged in rook versus rook, you know, I mean have a normal time control with the five second delay, why not? It makes perfect sense. It all comes down to their, I don't know, who knows? Another Bishop B5 Rosalimo Sicilian. Um, it's a really good line for white though. Fide chose the increment. Delay causes people to think the clock is broken. Well, one of my students was complaining, like there was this guy, well, this happens all the time, but like in the US tournaments, I think they do it on purpose. People like just don't, they pretend they forget to set the delay on the clock, you know? And so players who aren't really paying attention don't realize there's no time delay till they like get really low on the clock and then lose on time. And it happened to a friend of mine in California then the guy tried to do it to another player who became like irate. But you can't complain like after the game. I mean, like the whole game, you see the clock on those Kronos clocks or whatever. And, and it's like, you know, you can see the delay counting down normally. So it's your fault if you didn't realize, but still. Um, I don't know if I like this that much. I'm allowing several pieces to come off, you know, and it's, it's sort of a boring position. What should I play there though? This is so hard to decide. Like instead of, instead of this, maybe I should play like E5. There was this, it reminds me of this Russian guy who always plays for a draw. It's like an, an old IM named Yevgeny Piankov. He literally like plays for a draw every single game that he plays, like no matter who he's playing against. And he always tries to do like that in the London system. He goes like Bishop E2, Bishop F3, like trying to trade pieces here, Bishop D2, Bishop C3. It's like addiction to trading pieces. Um, I couldn't beat Piankov. He ended up drawing me as much as I, I tried. Tushar says, sorry, you missed the stream. Well, you can't do, you can't make it every day, man. So, I mean, the, the increment system is much simpler, you know, you just have a five second delay. You could make it like 10 seconds or something and, and then people would have enough time to write down their move. You know, with the, with the increment system, okay, that's, I think one of the reasons for the 30 second increment is that technically we don't have to get in any disputes about like keeping score. That really simplifies things for the, for the chess arbiters. Um, that, that they don't have situations where the players actually have to stop taking score, uh, keeping notation. And, and with a five second delay, I guess you have to stop taking notation um, at some point. So that's one argument for the time increment um, rather than delay. But you could make the delay a little bit larger, like 10 to 15 seconds. And that way, you know, you could, you could say that people have to keep score too. Why does it have to be five second delay? Why not a 10 second delay or 15 second delay? Um, that would be perfect in my opinion. Now what do I do against Yevgeny Piankov? It's, <laughs> I love this move, knight a3. He will make no pawn move before it's time. All right, I guess I'm supposed to play e6 here e6 and knight 97 if knight c4 maybe b5 it's like robert mandat what is that line um what's that am i into crypto i'm just the uh, you're talking to me or to other guys? I am whale.
Rating the moves is supposed to be automated, automatical these days. Well, with the 30 second increments, it is. It should be. But I still think I would prefer delay if I had to choose. I'd rather have like a set amount of time, dude, and like be able to use the time the way I want to use the time. So give me two hours and 40 moves, and then like one hour for the rest of the game with a 15 second delay. For me, that would be like, that is the ultimate time control. Six hours for the whole game, three hours for each player, plus 10 to 15 second delay to like write down the move and not lose with Rook against Rook against uh, Krivonosov or something, you know? I mean, it's, uh, that's the perfect time control. I don't want to have like 30 second increments. I want to use the time when I want to use the time. You know, if I want to use the time in the opening, let me use my two hours the way I want to use it, you know? 40 and 90 with a 30 second delay is actually usually adding up to 110 minutes if we play 40 moves. Um, if we reach the 40 moves, you get 110 minutes of time. But I'd rather have 120 minutes of time and use it the way I want to use it. Yeah, a lot of people um, say the opposite, Arsenal fan. Like, a lot of people blunder when they use a lot of time on one move. But I think inexperienced players will make hasty moves sometimes, of course. What the heck is Knight G4 about? I can play h5, it kind of weakens my king side a little bit. It's also f5 is possible. I don't see anything wrong with it. I kind of like f5. I mean, my king is only temporarily going to be hanging out here on e8. Once I've played b5, though, I think there goes castle and queen side. The pawns are the soul of chess. VBN has obviously been taught not to move too many pawns, which isn't a bad, you know, general concept to kind of keep in mind, but I'm more Korch, Korchnoi and, and being will be willing to use a lot of pawn moves especially in the Sicilian defense and closed Sicilian, closed English, Korchnoi and with, I'm moving almost every single pawn. You could take with the knight, but the knight on g4 is kind of a, kind of a tough nut to crack there. So I don't like that hanging out there like a vulture. Um, I'm just castling king side and my king can even go to h8 and we can just start bringing down the g file. My pawns are controlling a lot of central squares. Pawn play is something that a lot of people, you know, are slow to master. Computers, I think, teach people not to move their pawns in a way. Um, Computers tend to be kind of conservative with pawn moves. If you look at the games of human masters um, in the history of chess, oftentimes they, they use a lot more pawn moves than if you're learning from a computer. Um, it's going to make you very kind of conservative with your use of pawn moves. Computers are programmed not to weaken their structure. And I think that's good, but it teaches humans to play this kind of weird, weird style that uh, is, is rather different from what you know typically would have been seen in the history of the game okay there's a lot of differences between like classical openings like e4 e5 is much more open you can't make tons of pawn moves if there's like an open file in the middle of the board or something but in closed positions mastering understanding of the pawns is is really essential Anyway, guys, I'm going to be back on Sunday. Um, Magnus versus best computer, no chance, man. It's, 
it's over for humans. I mean, it's been over for a long time. Humans have no chance against computers. There, there is zero, zero percent chance. Unless the computer programmers start throwing games to make it interesting. Yeah, there may be Knight H3. I'd also like to get the last figures in the figures. It figures. He should really be trying to maybe blockade my pawns, you know, immobilize my pawns with F4. I thought Knight H3 with the idea of Knight F4 or F4 would have been best. Now I can simply win a pawn. Ah, no, I can't. Okay, I thought he was going to play Bishop D2, but he didn't. This is much more... more logical. My pawn center is pretty monstrous, but still it's not that easy. This pawn is now. Making it difficult for me to push. It's it's a very strange style that for me this player plays. Kind of passive and, and though very respecting the pawn structure. Um he doesn't want to make any kind of pawn weaknesses, which I understand to a certain degree. But the spatial side of this, um, seems like a player who probably learned by playing against computers a lot because he almost plays in the style of like a computer in that not making any pawn weaknesses religiously now we finally have e4 this is a move he should avoid making if at all possible Undoubling my pawns increases the value of my of my position massively. He should definitely not undouble those pawns. Now d3 looks quite strong. Maybe rook c8 first. But still it's hard to crack white's position. kind of lashing out with g4 is really dangerous bishop e5 We're threatening bishop takes h2 check, and then this square just goes, so I think that white is probably lost here. Unless he can sacrifice a piece somehow, um, with like rook takes e4. Yeah, that's all he can do. He like has to sacrifice a piece, not recapturing on h2. Rook takes e4. And then here, um... 
I guess if I'm precise, queen b7, pinning him, still it's not that easy. Black would have to be very accurate to win in this position. My pieces are a little precariously placed. So anyway, guys, thanks for uh, for watching. I got to go. Um, interesting stream today. The purpose of rook d8 was to defend d4 so I could push e4. This is the whole game plan there. I had to push e4. We have to overprotect d4. He had it attacked like three times. Anyway, guys, we are... D3 looks strong, but I wasn't sure. So I played this preparatory rook c8 move. I don't know which was better. But I thought the d3 maybe not a big deal, you know. So anyway, guys, we'll be back on Sunday with a simul stream here. It's uh, 6.30 p.m. CET, 20-player simul on meetchess.org. Um, yeah, we'll be back and, and play that simul. And also, thanks for watching today. Thanks, Soltigo, for being here to moderate. Thanks, everybody, for playing and uh, and being with me this week. We'll, um, we'll ask you to subscribe also over on, uh, on YouTube, Video Chess Training on YouTube where I will upload the stream and all of my streams. Also, please support the stream by subscribing on Twitch, as many of you have. And also, if you can afford it, donate via PayPal to support the stream and the YouTube channel. So again, guys, thank you very much. We'll be back on Sunday, and uh, have a great weekend. Bye-bye.